I'm Howard Lederer, and welcome to the Secrets of No Limit Hold'em. More than 150 million players are playing poker worldwide, and more and more of that game is No Limit Hold'em. It's a game that offers a tremendous amount of excitement. There's bluffing, there's luck, and there's also a lot of skill. Now come to one of my favorite parts of the game, and that's reading your opponent. Tells are definitely an acquired skill, but if you do acquire that skill, you'll be able to make some of your most profitable decisions at a No Limit Hold'em table. Now we're going to look at some of my favorite tells and some very basic tells. Now you have to remember, no two tells are the same, so you're going to have to apply these things to your specific opponents. But if you do, I think you'll see a big improvement in your results. Well, we now come to one of my favorite tells, and that's the quick call. Very often you can catch a big bluff on the river, not by anything your opponent did on the river, but by how he was betting his hand earlier in the pot. Now you'll see here, Janine bets, and Tony's making a very quick call, and that usually indicates a drawing hand. You see, if he had a pair hand, he would have to consider, is my hand good, should I raise, should I call, or should I fold? But when you have a draw, you know your hand is beat, you know you have to hit your draw, so there's no decision. You just put your money in and you hope you get there. Now the beautiful thing about this is that if later on in the hand the draw doesn't hit and all of a sudden your opponent's making a big bet, you know things don't add up and you know you're probably catching a bluff. Calls like these are about as profitable as they come in No Limit Hold'em. Well, we now come to another very important tell and that is the defensive check. One of the most powerful plays in No Limit Hold'em, of course, is the check raise to trap your opponent into betting and then making a big raise. So it's always important to know whether that check is an honest check or a check for a check raise. And here we see Janine making what I consider to be a very defensive check, but it's a common one that comes up all the time. You see her fiddling with her chips, trying to convince you that she's thinking of betting, and now she makes that check. That is almost always an indication of true weakness. She would not try and indicate that she's thinking about betting. If she had a big hand, she wouldn't want you to know that she's thinking about betting. Always consider a player's motivation for showing you something. So if she's counting her chips like this and really showing you that she's thinking of betting and then she checks, that usually means a very weak hand or at least a hand that doesn't want to bet. And then you make a big bet and you'll almost always win the pot after a check like that. Now, this is a classic tell and this is when someone puts the chips in the pot with a little extra added emphasis. Now remember, when you're reading an opponent, usually weak means strong and strong means weak. You see how strongly Tony has thrown the chips in the pot there. He's trying to look strong. He's looking right over at his opponent after he does that. And that is a, a classic strong means weak tell. You see here, he's cutting off the chips and boom, those last two go in the pot right at his opponent. He doesn't want to appear weak and encourage a call, but of course, if you're aware about tell theory where strong means weak, you're going to see a bet like that and you're always going to suspect a bluff. Well, this next tell I call the stare down. Now, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same tell that we just saw, but I really wanted you to see it from Janine's perspective. So we're looking right over her head here. Tony's putting his chips in and see how he sits straight up. He's looking right at her and he's staring her down. Again, it's the strong means weak here. He's trying to look forceful. He's being a bit defensive and he's looking over at his opponent. You see, he's considering whether to bluff. There goes the bluff, the few extra chips, and he sits right up, looks right at his opponent, faces his opponent, squares his shoulders up to the opponent. Again, this is a classic bluffing move. Okay, well, this is essentially the opposite of the last two that we just looked at. Again, we're looking right over Janine's shoulder. And this is the classic weak mean strong. Look how quietly the chips are going in the pot. Look at how Tony is not making eye contact with Janine. He's looking away. He looks a little disinterested, but he's very comfortable. He's not tense. He's not sitting up in his chair. He's just trying to look like Eh, nothing special. I don't have a great hand. This is usually means a very strong hand. Anyone that can put the chips in this quietly and this comfortably and this confidently probably has a big hand. These next couple of examples will illustrate why I don't want you looking at your hand before it's your turn to act. 
We're going to see Janine here. Look at her whole card. She immediately straightens up. She puts a chip on her cards, and she's immediately interested in the action coming around to her. You see she's in the big blind. Well, if you're thinking of playing a marginal hand here, you're probably going to get played with by the big blind. It's very hard not to give off this tell. You're sitting there. You take a look at your cards. If you're interested, you're going to look interested. If you're not interested, you're not going to look interested. This is a really easy tell to give off, but you don't have to do it if you don't look at your cards until it's your turn to act. Okay, well, we're going to essentially look at the opposite of the last tell, and this is a very difficult tell not to give off if you look at your cards before it's your turn to act. You see here, Janine's looked at her cards. She's kind of looking back at them now. She's not interested in the action. She's just sort of looking down. She's waiting until it's her turn to fold. Well, if I see this kind of tell, I am going to go after her big blind 100% of the time if I'm in late position. This is a classic time when you can deviate from the basic strategy that I've provided you on this tape. And this just goes to show not all tells are the opposite. Here she's being weak, and she is weak. You need to know when someone's telling the truth and when someone isn't at the poker table. Okay, we're now going to look at one of my favorite tells. And it's the kind of tell that you really want to be watching for uh, sort of out of the corner of your eye. And it's a very profitable tell when you do get to see it. Uh, so here we have a typical hand. Let's imagine that the game is full. There have been a lot of folds, and now we're coming around to Lori. And she folds her hand, and now uh, it's up to Jim, and he's in cutoff position. He takes a look at his hand, and it's, it's not very good, and he folds. And if, if you've been sitting in the big blind watching this action, and now it comes around to Mylene, and she's going to make it 600 here on the button. You know, and you look down at sort of a mediocre hand, a hand like Jack-8 or, or, or really any two cards, and you probably throw your hand away. But if we pause this now uh, and we go back to what Mylene was doing before the action came up to her, and if you were noticing this out of the corner of your eye, I think you'd have a very profitable situation here. So while Lori and Jim were folding their cards, Mylene took a look at the 9-7 offsuit, which isn't a very good hand, and did a very typical thing that people do when they look down at two cards that aren't very good, and they assume they're not going to be in the pot. They get distracted. Cocktail waitress comes up, and they start talking to the cocktail waitress, or they order a drink, or they talk to their neighbor here like Mylene is doing, or they just start looking off into space because they're not expecting to play the pot. And now as Jim is about to fold. You see, she looks over and she notices, oh, look at this. Everyone's folding to me. Maybe I can try and pick up the pot. And uh, after he does fold, she looks down and she grabs her $600 and she makes her bet. Now, if you've been watching all of this, you realize there's almost no chance she has a good hand. If she had two aces, she's not going to be talking to Jared. Um, her neighbor, she's going to be watching very intently all the action coming up to her. So you need to look for people who are distracted and then enter a pot because everyone's folded to them. And that's usually a sure sign that they have a weak hand. And if I were in the big blind and I'd seen all this, I don't care what I have. I'm going to re-raise and I'm going to pick up that money and I'm going to win about $1,000 with almost no risk. There's almost no chance that she has the kind of hand that can call me. Okay, let's look at another one of my favorite tells, and this will be a tell of strength as opposed to a tell of weakness. Uh, we have a three-way pot here, and the flop comes down a couple of sixes and a seven. Uh, Jim's in first position, and he checks, and Jared uh, is next to act, and he checks, and now we've come up to Jai, and he's just sort of kind of staring at the pot. He doesn't know the actions to him. In fact, it takes the dealer to kind of... Uh, jar him uh, and let him know that it's to him. Uh, sometimes it's the dealer, sometimes it's a player that says, hey, it's to you. This happens very often, and strangely, uh, and almost counterintuitively, it seems to happen a lot when someone has a very big hand. Now, it's not like he's been just looking off into space and he's not interested. He's kind of like looking at the pot, but he doesn't know it's to him. And then when he's told that it's to him, he immediately goes, oh, yes, and then he grabs some chips and he makes a sizable bet into the pot. I have, like, never, ever seen anyone bluff after this happens. Um, basically, you're almost embarrassed. You didn't know the action was to you. And it is very unlikely that somebody, after being informed that they didn't know the action was to them, would then have the wherewithal to try and bluff into the pot. Because you have to understand, when people are bluffing, they want things to be just right. They don't want to be able to look back and go, whoa, I was so stupid. Why did I bluff into that pot? And certainly, having the dealer or another player inform you that the action is to you it gives someone an excuse not to bluff, even if they might have been thinking about bluffing. The fact that, and, and almost the embarrassment of the fact that they were told that the action is to them would stop them from bluffing. 
So when someone doesn't know the action is to them, and then they're informed of that, and then they make the bet, just about 100 out of 100 times, they're actually going to have a very big hand. This is actually a sign of extreme strength when someone makes a bet like this. Okay, we're going to look at another strength tell here. We have uh, Lori here in first position, and she checks, and uh, she's playing heads up against uh, Jared. And uh, let's watch him put the chips in the pot here. You see his hands are just shaking. Again, this is almost counterintuitive. I think a lot of people would infer that if someone were putting the money in the pot and his hands were shaking, uh, that he might be bluffing, that he's probably very nervous. But actually, this is usually a sign of extreme strength. There's just a lot of adrenaline pumping through his veins. He's very excited. It's actually a sign of excitement, and you get excited when you have a very big hand. It's very hard to control the adrenaline there and he is betting. We've looked at this at a couple of angles. You really need to be careful, particularly when an inexperienced player puts money in the pot and their hand is shaking. This is also the kind of tell that's very hard to control. So it would be a very hard tell to send out a false tell on, and it's a very hard tell to disguise if you have the problem of getting very excited when you flop a big hand. So this is definitely one of the reasons why, as a player, you need to become very comfortable in these types of situations. Because if your hands are shaking when you flop a big hand, that's going to be a sure sign of strength. Uh, I'll, any of the experienced players at the table are going to know that, and they're going to avoid your big hands. Again, it's very important to be comfortable, and then they're not going to pick up one of the classic strength tells that there are in No Limit Hold'em. 